recording um, just so we can post it later. Well, first of all, um, I will introduce myself. My name is Mackenzie Livingston, and I am the Recruitment and Communication Director at ACC. So I do a wide variety of things, but ultimately my goal is to help families decide if ACC is going to be the right fit for them and kind of process everything that goes along with the enrollment um, timeline and process. So um, that's pretty much what I do, but now I'm going to introduce Sarah really quick and she's going to share with you uh, her year and grade that she's in at ACC, a couple of things that she's involved in. And then I know we might have some students attending tonight and as well as parents. And so at the very end of this, you'll have the opportunity to ask her student perspective as well. So go ahead, Sarah. Uh, I'm Nara, I'm a junior, and I'm in Key Club. I'm a student ambassador, and then I play tennis and softball. Awesome. So yeah, she's very involved, which is great, as well as a good student. So I felt like she was the perfect role model to join us tonight. Um, so I am going to kind of walk you through the process of kind of a glimpse into ACC. If you've never um, visited school before, you should have received a virtual tour link as well as our recruitment video in your registration confirmation email. So you literally can take a tour of our school step by step every single inch of the building as if you were there in person. So if you haven't done that yet, I would highly encourage you to do that after this is over or at some point. Um, however, I do, and I'll mention this again, but we are going to be offering personal tours to parents during the placement exam. So I'll get into that later, but we will be offering physical tours if you felt comfortable to do that. So I am going to share my screen um, with everybody, and that way you can see our um, go here with that way you can see our presentation. Okay, so I'm going to share it. Let me just get to my, let me move this Prezi presentation here. And of course, it's loading. Okay, so I'm just going to give you a brief overview of ACC. We go. So if you've never been to the school before, this is what it looks like on the outside. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, and then we're going to just do a couple of brief facts. So our mascot is the Charger. Our colors are blue and gold. And we are a co-educational school where we have just about 500 students overall in the entire building, but we really try to keep our class size at about 18 to 19 students, especially this year, because we wanted to obviously, you know, our main goal is to create more of an intimate environment where students aren't afraid to ask questions and get to know their teachers and whatnot. So that's really where that magic number came in of 19. But this year that was extremely beneficial because we were able to socially distance the students a little bit better. So we're super conscious of that. Um, we are a Catholic school, you know, obviously that's in the name, but students do not have to be Catholic to go to ACC because we do accept everybody and anybody, no matter what religious background they are, even if they aren't of a religious background. So it's kind of nice because a very large majority of students are, but at the same time, students are getting to learn different types of, you know, students and, and behaviors and cultures to be engrossed with and, and they learn from each other, which is such a great thing, especially with our smaller class sizes. Um, we are college preparatory, so that means that our, our classes are set up to prepare our students for college, um, specifically with the block scheduling, which I will go into in a couple of slides. Um, but it's super important for you to know, especially if you're a student joining us tonight, um, or even with parents, letting your students know that high school is the time where they get to choose their and they can do so in a variety of different ways, and ACC helps them that um, through, oops, this doesn't want to work for me, um, through sports and extracurricular activities. So normally you would be holding a hard copy view book, um, but right now, and I did um, provide a version for you, so you're welcome to look over it, just an overview of school, but it does this to all of our sports that we have. 
offer. Um, so then, you know, obviously just have your mirror to mirror sports. And then you have different clubs and organizations to choose from as well. So we have over 23 of those um, and counting. I mean, students are constantly creating new clubs, which is great because if there's not something already graded and there's something that interests them, all you have to do is gather a couple of friends that would get to join with them and then find a faculty member to be the club moderator in order to um, promote that. And that's right. So that's nice, nice work. Um, additionally, so things outside the classroom. Inside the classroom to help students choose their path and kind of figure out what it is they like and what they like before going on to college, if that is the route that they want to go down, we have a lot of different electives that you see here. So that can range anywhere from a world language to a foods class or photography or psychology, all sorts of different things that we try to incorporate into the class when students are taking these classes prior to going to college, knowing like, hey, I really want this photo class, or I really, really love my Spanish class. Maybe that's something I want to mind in college. So therefore, they can know, hopefully, what direction that they want to go so that they're not wasting any time for school semesters in college figuring out what it is that they want to do. So we help them in that way. All right, so moving right along, I'm just going to make sure nobody has any questions. So I'm just going to pop over to my, okay, good, no open questions, my little question box. Um, all right, so block scheduling, I would say, is what really sets us apart from any other school in our area. Um, there's only one other school that I know of, um, and it's a public school that does block scheduling in the Fox Valley area. And Sarah, if you want to jump in, is this like one of the best parts of ACC, would you say? Oh, yeah. You get, like, so much time to finish all your homework, and, like, you're not stressed out at all because of it. Exactly. So, the way it works is every single student takes four classes every single day, Monday through Friday, the exact same four for an entire semester, okay? Um, each class is an hour and a half long, which I know to some students it might feel like, oh my gosh, how am I going to sit in one class for an hour and a half? Sarah, you can probably attest to it. Teachers will not be lecturing the entire time because they know that the average, atten average attention span um, is about, you know, 45 minutes, right? So um, nobody really wants to be talking that long either. And so you can't absorb all of this material uh, within a you know, full hour and a half. So there is typically, depending on the day and the class and the teacher and the way it's structured, the back end of the class time is typically dedicated to either group projects or working on homework or that time to ask extra questions. Am I right, Sarah? Mm -hmm. Okay. So with that being said, the reason we have block scheduling and the reason we can accommodate so many different types of learners is because it, it really does serve two different types of students. So the block scheduling can serve one, the student who needs that extra time, who maybe doesn't understand material that fast and needs additional, I don't know, explanation or is afraid usually to raise their hand because they know that they only have 45 minutes in a normal traditional schedule. So they're going to take up time where it's not like that here. So the teachers do have that extra, you know, half hour to explain material a little bit better. So it serves those learners who need a little bit of extra time. The second student it serves are those students who need um, or who don't need but are interested in doubling up in classes. What I mean by that and the best way I can explain this to make it simple for those of you who may haven't heard it before, um, let's say your student takes Algebra 1 the very first semester of their freshman year and they would like to double up in math. That means that they could take geometry the second semester of their freshman year and be done with a sophomore level math class by the end of their freshman year. So that's how you can double up. And the reason students do that is to either get ahead, earn more credit so they have the opportunity to take maybe more electives junior and senior year, or take AP classes and honors classes that then would get them college credit um, and, and take dual credit classes, which is amazing. We have plenty of opportunities to take AP courses, which I'll go over in a little bit. But it allows students to graduate ACC while already having credit under their belt at the college level. So those are the two different varieties of students and learners that the block scheduling can offer. I don't know if we have any questions. Sarah, do you want to add anything? To that? Did I miss anything? Um, no, I don't think so. Okay, good. <laughs> um, so with that being said, the normal start day um, starts at 8 a.m and we end at 2.50. The students get five minute passing periods, which is plenty of time. And if you were in the building right now for a normal open house, we would tell you and your student ambassador would tell you on your tour that the first floor is a circle. The second floor is a U with a staircase right in the middle. So with lockers on either wing. 
So it's very easy to get around. I know a very common concern and, and nervousness that students have when they go to high school is what if I can't find my class or I can't open my locker or I can't find my locker. And that really doesn't happen at ACC because it is very easy to get, a, get around. And also everyone is there to help each other. So if you can't find your class, you could just ask someone and they're more than happy to help you. Um, students do get 25 minutes for lunch and that also is plenty of time to eat and you can students can purchase their lunch through the cafeteria you will get your id and parents can just load that id with more lunch money um, and the menu is always updated in a month in advance so that you can check to see what food is being offered when and you can either bring your lunch you know doesn't matter um, whatever you would prefer to do so um, one of the things that i always like to talk about and i think it's important is whatever high school your student, or if you are the student and you're listening to me, whatever school you choose, you need to pick a place that you see yourself being successful, okay? Because it is going to be your home for the next four years and you wanna enjoy those four years and know that that school has enough resources to help you get to where it is that you want to go, okay? So I like to share these statistics with families and let you know that 100%, which you literally can't get any better than that, 100% of our students who do apply to a four-year school get accepted. And I think that that is something that we are extremely proud of. And the reason we are able to do that is because your counselors, we have two of them, they meet with you pretty much from day one and they're there for you every step of the way. Students have to meet with their counselors in order to register for classes for the following semester. So there's those conversations of what is it that interests you and what do you want to do when you leave high school are already being started from freshman year. And so that is why our counselors were able to gear students toward the schools that they should be looking at based on their grades and their capabilities and where they want to be. So that's why we have such a high percentage of students being accepted. Um, it's also important and I didn't, I should have included it in this presentation, but scholarships are huge. There are so many different scholarships to earn when you go to college. And I know right now you're probably thinking like, okay, we're just trying to figure out what high school going to But it is important to know that the high school you choose has those resources to help. And with that being said, last year we had $9 million awarded to the class of 2020 um, to go to college. I mean, that's an accumulation of, of scholarships. We didn't even report all. We didn't have every single student report what they earned. So that's huge. Um, and so we have a variety and we help you navigate our counselors will help the families navigate which scholarships their students should be applying for based on their qualifications. Um, and also, we just like to say, you know, with the block scheduling, we are able to accommodate a lot of different levels of classes. So we are able to typically accept transfer student freshmen in sophomore year. Um, it does seem a little bit more tricky than senior year to make sure they have enough credits, but we always welcome students. So we make, we make it work, and about 15% of our enrollment does make up a transfer students every single year. So I like to include that because if you do choose a different school, and it's not everything you thought it would be, you can keep in mind. So now, this is part of parents. So since you are um, watching and you want to go, you know, snack a parent or going, we are going to talk about which agency, you know, that is a huge part of the decision-making process. So I am going to bring you to our website. So this is always going to be available if you ever forget what tuition is or you want to look up the fees and whatnot. It's all laid out for you here. So you will notice that right now we have not released the tuition and fees for the 2021-2022 pandemic year. However, um, we typically do our best not to increase these numbers for more than $200. So since all of you belong to Annunciation, you obviously would fall underneath the tuition parish rate um, for, you know, your first student, or if you have siblings, then you can kind of, you know, figure out what it is that you would pay um, based on how many students you have attending at the exact same time. And we have all of our fees listed here. Um, as well as just additional class fees, and you don't need to worry about those until after your classes are selected. But the one thing I do wanna talk about is tuition assistance. So what we usually recommend is you can start applying for this as early as November 1st, but no later than May 1st. The reason for that is because we need, there, there really isn't, like everyone wants to know, well, how many, how much financial aid do you have to give to families? And there really is no specific answer because we make our families apply every single year because we understand that financial situations are constantly changing. And so um, we base our aid off of the pool of applicants every single year. 
So what I can tell you, and just to be completely transparent, we will never award more than half of what tuition is. So you can kind of plan on that, at least, you know, best case scenario, that's what you would get, okay? Um, the process is a little lengthy to apply for financial aid, so I would recommend taking about 30 minutes of your time to fill out the application. That's how long it should take. And you will need to provide your tax returns. So you can provide what you did this past year until after your taxes for the following year have been filed and you can upload them later, but at least you can get all of your basic information um, in the system because you'll create your own password and whatnot. So again, you will do this every single year. So even if, it, you know, let's say you don't qualify one year, but maybe you will the next. So we never say never. And I, I always encourage people to fill out the financial aid application because you never know. And that's all, no matter what your financial situation is, I always encourage people to do it. So um, one nice thing that we do that also helps students prepare for college because this is huge in college is we have a student work program. So essentially your student, or if you are the student listening tonight, you can work at ACC before or after school or during um, breaks, like during the summer or Christmas vacation or spring break, you can work at the school with Mr. Kipper, who is our maintenance um, department, and you will earn minimum wage that then gets put toward your tuition. So you have a hand in your education and parents, it's great because you're basically, you know, giving your students the responsibility of owning some of their education. Um, so essentially that's another option that you can do. Um, the scholarships and tuition information are coming. <laughs> so I did my best. Our, our bookkeeping office is still in the midst of tweaking some things. And so I did want to point out where you will find them. Um, and that is all down here. So eventually we will have a scholarship brochure up there that um, is updated and lists everything. So if you click this one where my mouse is hovering over, um, this is this past year's. However, it definitely will be up by November 1st, which is when our um, fees, you know, eventually will be announced as well. So just keep in mind that the scholarships that we award are all based on the placement exam. Okay, so this is exactly where you'll find everything that you need. Um, regarding tuition and financial aid. I apologize that that was kind of lengthy, <laughs> um, but I did think it's important and I know that it's, you know, Catholic education is an investment and it's something that parents are, you know, feel strongly about and, and we're here to make it work and we're here to make sure that we are able to assist any family that we can no matter what. Um, and if our development director was on tonight, she would tell you that there really everybody gets a discount because there is a gap between what parents pay for tuition versus what it costs to actually educate your child. And I'm sure she'll tell you all about that um, at some point a little bit later, but I want to check my chat just in case people have questions. Are you anticipating a tuition increase for the 2021-2022 school year? That's a great question, Kelly. Thank you so much for asking. And basically, there's always going to be an increase, but we never try, we, we always try to keep it at a $200 minimum. I've been at ACC for five years, and I know in the past I've asked Father this, and he has said that for a long time it has never increased over that. So I do not anticipate the same thing happening. Um, so that is a good question. All right, so um, what's next? So um, essentially, the important things that need to happen if you have an eighth grade student are you need to register for the placement exam. And that is happening on Saturday, December 5th from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. It is the whole time. Um, there is a $30 fee, and this is going to happen in person. Okay, so the way that we are going to handle this is every single student will be assigned a room and a desk number so that we know where every single student is sitting and everybody will be socially distanced. So essentially we will be <laughs> using up a lot of our classrooms um, to accommodate everybody and to make sure that everyone is staying safe. All of the snacks that we offer, I know everyone's like, what about snacks? Um, we, those will all be prepackaged and sent to each classroom so that nobody's actually intermixing and intermingling together. 
And like I mentioned in the very beginning, parent tours are available and you can sign up for those um, on our website, which I will take you there just so you can see. Um, if you go to, again, our normal website, you hover over admission and you go to placement exam, you'll see all the details for the test. Um, this is where you would click to sign up for a tour, and then at the very bottom is where you would register people. So um, that's where you would register your student, and you'll just click on that, and you can pay directly online to make the check-in process that much easier for your student on the day of. So that's the placement test. Um, after that, or even before that, we highly encourage your students to do a shadow day because that is the best way for them to decide if ACC is going to be the right fit for them and they get to live the life of a charger for a day. Um, so we offer those on Tuesdays and Fridays and due to COVID, we are limiting it to one shadow student per day unless students attend the same school. We just don't want a bunch of different students coming from other schools and other um, environments and coming and exposing ACC. So if they're from the same school, multiple students can shadow, but we do our best to limit it to one. Um, and that is the full day, or you could do a half day. Lunch is on us. Um, Tuesdays seem to always be, and Sarah, you can back me up on this, but always seem to be the most popular day because of um, Chicken Nugget Tuesday, <laughs> so or Popcorn Chicken, whatever it's called, right? Yes. Yes. So um, that is something that you can schedule with me. You can go ahead and send me an email or give me a call. We can set that up and I'll send you a confirmation email with all the details. So um, the third thing to keep in mind is registration. So um, father and I still need to discuss how we're going to disperse the placement exam results because typically we, we would have a big gathering and a meeting where we go over everything and we sign up for registration time and imagine that that would be cool. So we'll send more information about that placement exam so you know how to obtain your student scores. So that's my help. Don't worry about that. But registration sure takes place and it usually takes place at the end of January. So I did put the dates there. You want to screenshot or write them down. Um, January 26th, 28th, and 30th. Um, and we'll have a sign out time slot for that after the placement exam as well. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, and then it is just a little like we have of things that we want to instill in the students when they go to walk across that graduation stage. We want to have like long learning. We want them to experience this careful that's something that they're interested in doing. And obviously prepare them for the future in whatever capacity that may be for that because there's students different and have different needs. So that is kind of our main goal. Um, now I'm going to turn it over to Sarah and she so graciously gave up her, her um, Tuesday night, what is it? Monday night to send with us and answer any questions you guys might have. By the time if you have questions, just go ahead and put them in the chat box just like how we did. Um, but while we're waiting for those to come in, she is going to share with you what her favorite part of ACC is. She's going to share with you um, some advice that she would give to students coming into high school um, and also why she chose ACC. So go ahead, Sarah. Um, my favorite part is probably the flex scheduling. It really like makes things a lot less stressful and more mm -hmm. And all the teams are like so helpful too. Um, for the advice, I would say you should play sports, like get involved so that you can meet a lot of different people. Um. That's really good advice. Because honestly, I mean, when you're involved in so many things, it really does enhance your experience so much more, the more connections you make. Um, yes, it looks good on a college application, but, you know, it's really about those relationships that you build in high school. Oh, what was the last thing? No, do you have, um, do you remember why you chose ACC? Oh, uh, all my family always went there, and then I also thought, like, the block scheduling will be really nice, so. Yes. I like that a lot. Did you feel like the block scheduling was hard to get used to coming from Annunciation directly to ACC? Yeah, in the beginning it was a little bit hard, but you get used to it pretty fast. Good. I know, that's typically what most people mention and say. Is the course guide posted online? Yes, it absolutely is. Um, and it is listed under our academics tab and you can view all of the different courses and their descriptions actually. Um, so you can read all the different courses that we offer. But then also when your student goes to pick classes and after the placement exam, when you get the registration paperwork, there is a sheet with suggestions and kind of like your typical freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior class schedule where you can actually fill in a little box and kind of map out your four years if you were that um, curious to see how your semesters would look. That's a good question. Any other questions? I think 
I'm not seeing any others come in. Um, after this um, open house, I guess you could call it, is over, uh, you will be receiving a kind of follow-up email that has a link to the placement exam. It has a link to, again, I believe I put our um, virtual tour in there and our view book. So you can reference everything that I kind of talked about here, as well as a link to our website and our social media platforms where we always try to keep things positive and informative as well. So if you guys don't have any, oh, do we get an iPad? Oh my gosh, I didn't even cover the technology piece. That is a great question. Um, so right now you do not get an iPad. Um, we do the Surface Pros. Sarah, do you want, do you have, which one do you have? If the uh, touch one? Yeah. Yes. Sorry, what is it? Um, which laptop do you have? Do you have the Lenovo Spin? Mm, not that one. No, not that one. Okay, I don't well, know anyway, you do, No, that's okay. You do get a laptop when you come to ACC. So all freshmen, and actually, so if you're in eighth grade, by next year, all the classes will have your own personal device. So that's something that's nice, but it is not a Mac. Um, we use um, Microsoft Office software, but it does come fully loaded, and it is a one-time fee for your parents. So that's a good question. Okay, any other questions that you guys have? If not, my email um, is on the website. It is also in the follow-up email that you will get. So you are more than welcome to call or email me. I'm happy to help. Thank you, Sarah, so much for joining with us. We appreciate your time. Um, and thank you all for kind of bearing with us and, and being with us through the very first virtual open house. This is obviously uncharted waters, but we're so happy you were, you were able to join us. And if you think of anybody who might have missed the webinar, I will be recording it and I will email it out to all Annunciation families. So you can always put a little bug in their ear and let them know that that will be coming. I did see two more questions pop up. Um, what is the fee? So the fee is $420. Definitely, definitely not $1,000. <laughs> um, and it's a one-time fee of $420. Um, and that is, then it's yours. So once you pay that fee, it is that student's laptop forever. You do not have to turn it in at the end of one year or four years. So that is officially yours to keep, which is very nice. All right. All right, I think I answered all of the questions that came up. So thank you again so much and we hope you have a great night. Bye everyone.